Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Market Misfits. So we're looking at the coin market cap data right now, and we are clear over in the greed. So just a heads up to everybody. We're going to be looking at Bitcoin, then we're going to be checking out XRP and the XRP BTC chart. On the hour, Bitcoin's down 30.33%. On 24 hours, we're down 1.24%, 2.3%. And seven days, we're down 1.17%, 16%. On XRP, we're actually up still on the seven days. We're up 1.32%. On the day, we're down 2.8%. And on the hour, we're up just 0.32%. So later today, we have the FOMC meeting minutes coming in. So just FYI, if you're catching this before this news comes out, you know, anything USD related, which is, you know, nearly everything you want to keep up, keep your eyes out for that. Let's check out this article here. Ripple CEO says he welcomes XRP ETF. In fact, it's inevitable. Brad Garlinghouse. So let's get into this article and we'll check out the charts. The Ripple CEO, Brad Garlinghouse, recently disclosed what the Ripple CEO, Brad Garlinghouse, recently disclosed that he would welcome the idea of a spot based XRP ETF declaring that the launch of an investment product is inevitable. Garlinghouse made these comments while speaking in a recent interview with Bloomberg. Kaylee Leans, the Ripple CEO, discussed the current state of the cryptocurrency landscape in the United States as well as the regulatory environment within the industry. Ripple CEO would welcome it. ETF, XRP ETF, addressing the possibility of a spot XRP ETF in the U.S., Garlinghouse expressed openness to the concept and welcomed the prospect of its launch. This comes amid ongoing discussions centered around the potential launch of a spot XRP or Ethereum ETF following the introduction of the Bitcoin-based products. So you would welcome an XRP ETF then? We would certainly welcome it, and I think it's inevitable that there'll be, you know, multiple ETFs around different uh, tokens. And I think you'll even see ETFs potentially around baskets that also, I think, further diversify that risk. Uh, given there's so much excitement around the ETF dynamic here, are you in talks with the largest issuers, particularly BlackRock, to get this done? Well, uh, I'm not going to comment on that. I know BlackRock has said some things publicly. Uh, you know, we think it makes sense for the XRP community overall. Uh, you know, Ripple obviously is a very important stakeholder in the XRP ecosystem, but we're not the only player. And look, we, we've seen, I mean, before the SEC lawsuit, XRP was the second most valuable digital asset. I think because of the headwinds of that lawsuit, you know, we've now seen that largely abate. Uh, but the long-term view on these things is about, you know, how do you create utility and really solve real-world problems with these different digital assets? Bitcoin's doing that very well as a store of value. XRP and its dynamics around being very fast, very efficient, and low cost on a per-transaction basis – makes it ideal for payments. And that's where Ripple really has leaned into as a company. Okay, so there you have it. He said it is inevitable, So, but he did not put a time on this. So let's continue on here. While Ethereum ETF products have gained more traction with the asset manager like BlackRock, 21 shares, and ARK Investing filing for approval from the U.S. SEC, the fate of the XRP-based ETF remains uncertain. Despite several filings, regulatory decisions for Ethereum ETFs are currently pending with delays contributing to the ongoing anticipation in the market. Meanwhile, the prospects of an XR of an XRP ETF in the US was briefly glimpsed when was briefly glimpsed when an alleged filing supposedly from BlackRock surfaced on Delaware ICIS last year. However, BlackRock promptly refuted the legitimacy of the filing categorizing it as a fake so we also covered we had covered this when that happened so it stayed up for several days then finally they had taken it down despite the absence of official filings from asset managers for an xrp etf garlic house believes that the introduction of a, such a product is inevitable essentially he expects the crypto industry to witness the launch of etfs based on multiple assets here's his words we would certainly welcome it. I think it's inevitable that there will be multiple ETFs around different tokens. You'll even see ETFs potentially around baskets that also first further diversify that risk. Garlinghouse comments emphasize his conviction in the traditional asset managers would delve further into the cryptocurrency landscape as the industry matures. He sees the emergence of numerous ETFs on various assets with XRP being among the highlighted candidates. 
the possibility of a launch. Based on his conviction, Lenz asked Ripple CEO if he is currently holding discussions with some of the largest asset managers, such as BlackRock, to see if there's potential launch of an XRP ETF. Garlinghouse refrained from providing a direct answer, mentioning that BlackRock had made some comments pop publicly. Interestingly, BlackRock CEO Vink also took a similar route when asked about the possibility of the launch of an XRP ETF. Speaking of speaking to Fox Business, Charles Gasparon, Gasparin, Gasparonio last month, Vink noted that he cannot discuss the subject on air, sparking curiosity among the proponents. Speculation quickly emerged that Fink's response could mean the asset manager might be looking into a launch launch the product. However, in subsequent disclosure, Gasparano, Gasparino revealed that BlackRock has no plans to launch the product. So with all this being said, what I keep in mind when I'm seeing this, you know, we have it as read because they're saying that they denied it. But if you look back and remember what happened, there was actually there when the black when BlackRock filed for the Bitcoin ETF, they said that it was false. So there was there was a there was a bunch of hype going, you know, about the prospect of, and then there was one filed and they said that it was fake and it ended up being real. So, you know, in their words, they said that it was fake, but it ended up being real. You guys, so BlackRock, central banks, all these guys, you can't expect for them to sound the trumpets for everybody to say exactly what they're doing. In fact, a lot of times they're going to be saying the opposite. In his recent Bloomberg interview, Garlinghouse emphasized that the launch of the XRP ETF would make sense to the community, XRP community. He called attention to the fact that XRP was the second largest crypto asset before SEC lawsuit, underscoring its prominence in the crypto industry. So despite what's going on with XRP now, before all this stuff happened, it was number two. So it was not Ethereum. According to the Ripple CEO, the long-term aim for, of these assets is to help solve real-world problems by creating utility. He acknowledged Bitcoin's role as a store of value in solving real-world problems, stressing that XRP also provides real-world real utility as a medium for fast and cheap transactions. So we just posted this this morning for the call in the group Market Misfits. In our group Market Misfits, if you're not part of Market Misfits, be sure to come over to Market Misfits. It's absolutely free. There's nothing, no strings attached. And make sure you come over to the guides in the file section when you get here. If you have any questions or, you know, like to comment, we're dropping signals and analysis and news in here before we get to any videos. So, you know, any other any other projects, you know, you're going to find in here that we're trading. We've been trading a lot of HBAR and we've been trading Dogecoin, XDC and Algo. We, you know, feel free. You actually caught this Filecoin before they announced that they had partnered with Solana. So right here was up 49%. Not at all saying, you know, that this is financial advice or telling people to take these signals or ideas. We're putting them out there so that you can get an idea for yourself. If you have, you know, it helps to see other people's analysis sometimes to help come to your own conclusions. None of this is financial advice. Let's take a look at the Dow. Here we are on Dow Jones Weekly, and it's looking like we may be getting an inverse head and shoulders right here. Why is this important or relevant to cryptos? Because whenever the whenever the dow jones makes an all-time high cryptocurrencies are quick to follow so this is why we keep an eye on these indices in the us dollar as we are trading crypto it's very important because these have a direct correlation have a historical direct correlation to all-time highs and to market trends so Actually, it looks like we did complete an inverse head and shoulders here on the weekly last week for the Dow Jones. So we draw the neckline straight across here. We're going to see this candle popping up. So this is a positive sign for the Dow Jones. And it's a positive, you know, positive meaning bullish sign for the Dow Jones and for the cryptocurrency market. So the cryptocurrency market is going to be lagging behind here. But you can see we have a clear breach and we have a full pattern here. So you can see the, the shoulder the head and the shoulder and we're right down here around the 50 so let's take a quick look at the nasdaq so here we are on the nasdaq we were waiting for we were waiting for a pullback or correction down to around 16.5 on the nasdaq before looking for any potential buying opportunities here this is our next support here on the weekly so the nasdaq clearly ahead as it usually is 
you can kind of see this inverse head and shoulders right here. So head, shoulder. So we got shoulder, head, shoulder right here. So these are not all the time like spot on. You can't take this like verbatim or, you know, as a definite indicator as to what's going to happen in the crypto market. But these do give some foresight and have the historical data to back it up. A lot of times, the majority of the times, whatever these indices are doing, whatever the Dow's doing, whatever the NASDAQ is doing, Bitcoin is usually quick to follow. Here we are at the Bitcoin dominance chart. We've been looking at this and here we are on the daily. So on the four hour chart, we actually had a double tops up here. We've seen Bitcoin dominance come down a bit. This week we saw continued altcoins going up. Let's take a little bit closer look at the Bitcoin dominance. We're going to take a look at the Bitcoin chart next, and then we're going to take a look at XRP. So this is looking to me like this was our spring right here. So this is our daily resistance trend. And to me, this is looking like this is looking like a flag right here. So we may see some continuation, some selling off of Bitcoin. Maybe we'll see some Maybe we'll see some altcoins begin to pump again. Currently, they are down. So here we are on Bitcoin one hour chart. We've been keeping track of these liquidity sweeps inside of the group. So keeping everybody up to date the best that we can over at Market Misfit. So we just looked at this chart just a while ago over there. One thing that we are eyeballing still, and we have closed up a little bit, is this one hour fair value gap. So you can see the distance between the bottom of this wick and this zone. And recently, we just came down and we closed up some of this gap. So this has been a big imbalance. There was one up here, but, you know, it's come down quite a bit. We're looking to come sweep this area again up before we go down, if we go down. So none of this is financial advice. We're just, you know, given our perspective. But the more times that we see these lows breached here. So we saw a false breakout, first of all, on this triangle. So we had a pretty much an equi equidistant triangle here. We had a false bearish breakout. So liquidity, so people were going short to trigger people going short. We went and took out their stop losses by clearing this high. And then also we cleared this high too for people shorting. So then after that, we came back down for people going long. So we also triggered people going long. I say we, they, they triggered people to go long, traders to go long here by this breakout. We were watching it inside of the group on a smaller time frame. We did not get it in because we did not get our confirmation right here. We were looking for rejections along these areas when we see these retests right here. We did not get them, so we did not get in here. So you just got to be really careful whenever it comes to trading this stuff, these breakouts on Bitcoin, because you'll get a lot of false breakouts. So then here we come down again, and we get people going short, right? So anybody that was anybody that was going long had their stop losses down here below this low, maybe below this low. Regardless, we wiped that out, got people going long again, then came out, boom, and then we wiped out another low here and wiped out another low here. So the reason why these areas are important is because these are where the orders are going to be. This is where the liquidity was. So where is it now? We're thinking right up around here at around 52500 and then definitely up here past 53,000. So would not doubt to see a spike on Bitcoin to go up to 53. And then we just have to see what happens there, whether we get our double rejections and go up or we come down and clear this out. But still really looking at this area right here, this imbalance on Bitcoin on the hour to see if we're going to to wipe this stuff out and take out the slow down here and get this line in this circle down here, this area turn red. So that's one, this is mainly the area of interest that we're looking at down here. You know, we're also looking up above. So let's take a look at the XRP versus Bitcoin chart. We are approaching our supporting trend again on the daily for XRP BTC. Previously, we came down here, we could see on the one hour time frame when we exited, here's the supporting trend that we had exited. Boom, we got long on XRP here at this breach of structure, came back inside the channel. We saw a nice move against Bitcoin, but still we are looking, let's go back out to the four hour. We're still watching this center, this center trend. You see, we have an alert here. 
going to be watching price action as it comes down here to this trend and see if we get some confirmations and come back up. If we do come back up, this trend has historically been notorious for turning around the price and sending price back up to the center of the channel or above in a lot of cases. So at a minimum, let's take the measuring stick out real quick and see what we could be looking at here from the bottom of this trend. So if we come down here and we get our rejections, we get a price action pattern, then up to the trend, the center trend, let's say we come over here, we're still looking at about a 9% gain against Bitcoin at a minimum. But again, this is a prop. This is based on probability and historical data. It doesn't mean that that's what is going to happen by any means. Let's take a look at the XRP. Be, let's take a look at the XRP chart. But what it does mean is that it's more than likely. So we still we are still on the other side of this weekly this weekly resistance trend. So you can see here that we have retested this. And it looks like we could be coming down if you look at it from that way. Let's take a closer look in on the on the daily time frame to see where we are with XRP. So what we're kind of looking for here is to see something like this happen over here with XRP. So let's take our ghost pattern out. We're going to go from here to here. Get this to line up real quick. Then we're going to clone it. We're just going to bring it over here just to give us an idea because this is looking pretty similar. We put this here. We even had a little bit of a spring here. A little bit of a spring. So we bring this just about here. We want this bottom to match up. So that would clear us of a pattern here and we would have a double bottom if we repeat, if we get an accumulation right here. So boom. Something like this. So it'd be looking at some kind of double bottom possibly forming here. So main areas looking to hold on the daily. These areas, this support down here at around 47 cents. So for us, this is where we're going to be looking for confirmation signs for buying as we come down to this area to around, you know, below 50 cents. So again, not financial advice, but this is what we're going to be looking for as long as Bitcoin sediment remains bullish. But let's take another look at Bitcoin real quick. I just wanted to point something else out. And we are going to take the drawings off here and look at the naked chart. And this is starting to look, and it actually did at one point, form a complete double top right here. So it was one, two, we cleared, went up, okay, swept liquidity again. And so we have been consolidating for a while. Is a little while. Is this going to be end up being a distribution or an accumulation phase? Only time will tell. We still have this imbalance down here, and with the ETF hype, you know, had been dissipated, and with the ETF hype gone for Bitcoin, you know, what is going to happen next? Is the is the having coming up going to be enough to continue to move us forward, or are the Bitcoin ETFs their functionality going to continue? Their inflows going to continue? to push Bitcoin price up higher before the having, Honestly, kind of looking for a sharp jab down to maybe 30K before this happens, you know, to see some kind of black swan type event to get in, you know, because that's what history has shown us. Let's take a quick look at the daily, weekly time frame. Really, So just wanted to point out a couple of places right here where we had spring. So down here was our low in one of the previous bull runs. And we came up quite a bit and broke up and came slamming down right here. And so this right here, so this was March 20th, just before the halving, we had a big spike down. So kind of looking for something similar to come down over here. And the price we're looking at is around the 30K area. Maybe sweep out these lows right here at around 25K. So I know a lot of people are going to be saying that that's crazy, whatever. Well, Historical data is there to, you know, say that, hey, this is this is not crazy. Look at how far we were into this run when this happened. And so this is in March. We are in February. And so would not doubt at all to see something like this happen. In fact, 
looking for something like this and preparing for something like this. So if it does happen, then we will be ready for it. And it won't be like this, won't be like this horrible thing, but a great opportunity. So it just depends on how you look at things. Anyways, you guys, that's going to do it for now. If you all have any questions, just come on over to Market Misfits, drop a, drop a comment, send a message, and we will see you all on the next one. See ya.